some of the concepts, but we're going to do that in developing a different little test case. We're done with pieces for now, unfortunately. All right. How many of you are basketball fans? A couple? Okay. How many people know how basketball is scored? Okay, so how would if 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 you were to say how many points a player got, what would you need to know to compute that? Okay. Baskets times two. There's also a couple other things. Free throws, you get one point. And three pointers, you get three points. So a player's how many points a player scored is determined by this. And even if you don't know anything about basketball, just trust that this is how it works. <laughs> All right? So you got a player, LeBron James. If I would have thought clever and like put like Johnny Manziel there or something to show to show it's in sports, but you have free throws, field goals, and three point shots. So you get one point. No. So I'm not being silly here. I'm not saying like touchdown run and something else. You get one point for three throw for per free throw. One per free throw. Two points per field goal and three points for three point shot. So three throws, six field goals and three three point That's all you need to know about basketball here. All right, we're not going to ask you to play a zone defense or anything like that. You just need to know the scoring, how that works. So let's assume we're going to make a little application to score a basketball game. All right. So imagine this application could be used two different ways. All right, with two different user interfaces. So the, the scoring classes that we create, we could use a couple different ways using different user interfaces. Number one, we could be recording the game after it happened, where I know that LeBron had seven free throws, six field goals, and three three points. So we could we would know that right from the start. Another way we could do it, though, so we could have an we could do something like tally up the score for the whole team or something along those lines. All right. In this example, we're only going to be interested in a single game. We're not going to be interested in, because really, you know, someone has these stats for, you know, a bunch of games. You know, we could calculate their seasonal average or things such as that. But we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to calculate one game. All right. Don't want to overwhelm the problem. So one way that we could, we could be scoring this and using the objects that we create is after the fact, where we know the player name, we know the field goals, the free throws, and the three points. Another way we could have is we could have during the game, we could have teams and we could Each of the three that you just have to press the button. So this is LeBron. 
Kyrie Irving, and so on down the line. LeBron, click back. It shows he made one point. LeBron, the three-point button, he now has four points, and so on. So, you could use this application, you could use this logic in two different contexts. All right? Now again, we're not talking about user interfaces yet. So our test class is going to create, it's going to replace the um, user interface in, in, in testing uh, the logic of our player class. Now we're going to start out with a player class. All right? And we're going to define the stuff for a player class. We're going to make sure that works, and then we're going to extend it to include a team. So that we could say, who is the leading scorer for Cleveland in yesterday's game? And it will go through and it will tell you who had the most points. Or, um, what is the average points that a Cleveland player scored? How many Cleveland players had more than 20 points? Just things like that. All right. So we're going to start by building a player class. Then we will add a team class to it. Now, what methods do you think exist on the player class? Give two scenarios. Well, let's, let's look at that class. What are characteristics that a player has as a name? Well, I'm asking for attributes or the characteristics of this class that we are interested in. Because there's a lot of attributes, right? Height, weight, what college they went to or whatever. But for this scoring application, what are the attributes that we want? Okay. And so will there be one integer or how many integers? There'll be three integers. Will that be an attribute? That's something that you can calculate. Yes. We'll get to team later. We, we're doing a player first. Okay? So let's just do it a player at a time. All right? So, free throw, field goals, and three point shots. This will be a string, more than likely. This will be an int. This will be an int. And this will be an int. What constructors could we have? I realize that's a very open-ended question because we could have a lot of different constructors. But what constructors make sense to you? Or does it make sense not to declare any constructors? Yes. Okay. Uh, That's that's good. You missed a little bit at the beginning of class, but you 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 got the answer regarding that is what I was trying to say. So we talk this one of two different ways. One way would be to start off and be entering in the game after the fact. That I know LeBron had two free throws, six two point shots, and five three point shots and then be able to calculate how many points he had total. So that would be one way that we could use this, this class. And the other class, or the other way that we could use this class would be to have uh, record as the game was being played. So in other words, a brand new player, you know, a new player at the start of the game, right? And then you could have a button click every time you score three kinds of shots, and that would tally up the points for them. So, good answer. Why would you want doctor at all in this case? It would 
tends to create a player without a name. At the very minimum, you know, who's, who's, you know, who's playing center? I don't know. The mystery man is playing center. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to talk about a player that doesn't have a name, right? So then it a construct that accepts oh, the name, all right? That we can't create a player without giving it a name. Now, remember how it work. If you have any constructors, the constructor creates a constructor for you. And that constructor anything as far as virtualizing the variables. Memory. All right. Another state a constructor. If this class doesn't have any constructors, I play without name. And again, that's an absurd situation. So then ensure that a player has a name. So I constructor where the player has given a name. Now, why the constructor? Why the constructor that includes the name and the three scores? Yeah, if you recall, it doesn't make sense to say, well, okay, I player named LeBron James, and how many free throws did he get, and how many, you know, you might initially, you might yeah, that, alright? Again, in um, this in an earlier class, talking about the makers of classes and the users of classes, alright? There's still programmers that are making this, we're not talking about like end users, but make a versatile module. Make a module that can be used a couple different ways. All right? And what is, again, that doesn't have a player without a name, so we're going to have that. If you know what you did for the free throws and field goals and three points, you might as well initialize the player with that. All right? Right off the bat. Would any other Makes sense. We uh, do that because of just that, that that's going to be a calculation. All right. These are the only attributes we care about. All right. So, yeah. Okay. This is what a little not So, if you constructors, fine. That makes sense. I'm maybe being a third constructor based on the fact of what? Some players never take three-point shots. All right. So if he's the best, a constructor to say, I'm going to initialize the free throws and the field goals, but I'm going to set the three-point shots to zero. All right. So you could to do that, or simply stick with the two constructors. All right. Pretty much any player has a shot to taking and making a, uh, if they're in the game, they have a shot of making a free throw or a, um, a, um, um, a field goal. Three pointers are some players that just really don't ever do that. So we could create a constructor that didn't have that. All right. That's where, again, sort of knowing the problem domain helps uh, a little bit. All right. What methods are we going to have? Okay, we're going to have sets and gets for free throws, field goals, 
three points and name for that matter. Okay. All right. And we're also going to have gets for those same ones. We're going to have made a field goal, made a free throw, made a three-point shot, which is going to do what? Take how many three points they've already had and increment it by one. All right. So that way, if we're scoring along as the game is going on, someone makes three three-point shots, we should be able to know that they have a total of nine points. What other methods do we need? Total points. Get total points. All right, let's go and let's create this object and we will create our um, test class to test it. So let me go in, create a new folder here. That is a good point. Would it make sense to have a, oh, that's right. Um, oh, he made a basket. Click. Wait a minute, there's a foul on the play. The basket doesn't count. So, yeah, yeah that, would make, that would make sense to, to decrement it. All right. Does it make sense to you why an increment and decrement method would be a good idea instead of just setting it? Well, then I wouldn't have to remember, like, is that their fifth free throw or is that their sixth free throw? I could just say he made a new free throw add to it or take one away. So yeah, it would make sense to do that. that that's a good, good, uh, good thought on that. All right, let's go in and make here. What is this going to start with? Public. Public class basketball player. Again, some people like to put it at the end of the line. Some people like to put it there. Doesn't really matter to me. What do we have next in the class? All right. Yes, you're right. In general, pa pardon me? Private, private string name, right. Uh, in general, we're going to have a list of the attributes. So I'll put a comment in. Is int good for number of free throws they had? Yeah, because you don't get one and a half free throw. All right, so there we have our attributes. How do we make a constructor for this? Let's, go ahead. Right. Constructors are like methods, but they're a little different than methods. Constructors do not have a return value, so we don't declare the return value. Constructors are always going to be public. It really doesn't make sense to make a constructor that is not public. All right. Constructors will have arguments. Arguments being the parameters that you pass in. Now remember, we could develop this without any constructors. The problem would be is that when we created one of these guys, 
we could create one of them without setting some of the variables. And we want to make sure, as a developer of this component for other programmers to use, that at the very least, you initialize the name. So, we would have pun name of the class. Yes, the constructor is always just the name of the class. That's what it means when we say, and one we'll say later on, we'll say something like BB player LeBron equals new BB player. And then we'll give it some arguments. That is the name of the constructor, which matches, again, the name of the class. So, we mentioned we're going to have two constructors, one of which is going to uh, simply ask for the person's name, one of which we're going to be able to pass in a name and the other three values. So, by convention, I typically like to put arg in front of the arguments, just so I realize that's what they are. And what line of code would we have in here? We're taking in an argument that's the player's name. What do we want to do? We want to set the player's name attribute. So what would that line look like? Pardon me? Name equals arg name. All right. Now, what do those other two variables have a value, or other three variables have values of? Pardon me? I think by default there are, there is some default value given, probably zero. But do I want to chance that? No. So what will I do to those other variables? I'll initialize them to zero. So again, this is sort of the whole idea of a constructor is we can set some properties right off the bat as soon as the class or as soon as the object is created, we can initialize to certain values. Other ones, ones that haven't been supplied to the constructor, we can define. And in the case of points in a basketball game, default haven't set up then the number of points is zero that the player had. If we simply create the player with a name, their, their score is going to get um, set to zero. All right? So, I'm going to write my other constructor. It's going to look the same Except, I'm going to give three arguments here instead of just the one. Arg name, int, arg free throw, int, arg field goal, int, arg three point. And then the constructor will be largely the same, except I'm going to set these guys to the opposite instead of initializing them to zero. Now, we can develop these other methods.
We could develop those other methods. But you know me. I don't like to do the whole thing all at once. If I were to develop all these other methods, it would take me a while to be able to test it at all. right? And I'm liable to have a bunch of problems that are difficult to track down and all that. If I just do a couple methods at a time, then I can do at least some testing, and then I can move on and add some more methods and do a little bit more testing. So what do you think the method I, what method do I need to add here so that I can do some sort of reasonable testing? I'm thinking if I, if I do the get points, that that would allow me to test both those constructors. I could say, player, you know, I could say this player has 36 points, this player has zero points. Alright? So I'm going to go and add a pump method. It's going to return an ant. Get total points. That goes and does the math. Here's my calculation. The total is how many free throws they had. I could say times one, but I don't really need the times one. Plus two times the number of field goals, plus three times the number of three-point shots. That's the total, and then I return the total. All right. Now, I'm going to save this. What name am I going to save it as? I'm going to save it as bbplayer.java, whatever the class name is, .java. So I'm going to go up here and say File, Save. I'm going to get into my folder. Okay, I'll, I'll go back and, and do it in a second. <laughs> save it. Now, I'm going to compile it now even though there's really no way to test it, right? I can't test it because I don't have any classes in here that have a main method. So I can't possibly test this. But I could compile it, make sure it compiles cleanly. And there's something to be said for that. And it compiled cleanly. So, hey, I don't have anything else saying. It doesn't mean it's right or not, right? It's like a, a term paper that passes spell check. Your paper still could make no sense at all, but your nonsense is spelled correctly. All right? That's all that compiling is saying, that we follow the rules of the language. Who knows if it does what it's supposed to do? So now we can go in and we can create our test class. So I'm going to go into Notepad again.
and I'm going to make a public class called unit test. What does this need at least? Well, we have to have one class in our app that has a main in it. All right. What's the main method look like? public static void main and it accepts a string array as arguments. So, what I test? Well, I can create a player with each of the two constructors and ask for how many points it has. The constructor that only accepts a name will of course return zero points, or it should. The points that are the constructor that um, accepts the three things as um, arguments should do the calculation and return that. So let's go in and I'm going to say BB player, player one equals new BB player player one. Then I'm going to say BB player. P2 equals new BB player player 2. Let's say they got three free throws, four field goals and two three-point shots. So they should have gotten 17 points. 3 plus 8 is 11. Yeah, 17 points. Then I can ask system that out that print ln p1 dot and what's it called? Get total points and the same thing for P2 so this should show 0 and 17 Assuming my math is correct. Zero and seventeen. All right. So again, if it was quitting time and it was, you know, the foreman pulled the bird's tail and it squawked like in the Flintstones, and we get in our car and we get our feet running and we drive off into the sunset, we have at least gotten this far. All right. And we have code that works. It doesn't do everything it's supposed to do, but it works. So 
you know, we made progress on the problem. All right. Question. Can I do this? I haven't even finished yet. Jeez. Can I do that? What? Who is going to Okay. And this is why I by asking who is going to yell at you. Because two things could be yelling at me. All right. Number one. When I go to compile this code, it could say, hey, you violated the rules of the language, and therefore I am not going to compile. Those are the things you want to get, because those prevent your Let me an error that is known about hands, right? So, keep you from doing damage by telling. Hey, you can't do that. All right. The bad kind of errors are errors. And what are if you find for a while, so everything compiles, but some circumstances will create an object, but that object but you think it's still a lot to do something with it. Or you try to or you've actually created it, or something like that. Of the language, but under certain circumstances, they're going to blow. And what is and that's great. All right, we can fix it. The cases are well, but just under certain circumstances, because that's difficult to, operate, especially in complex problems, is. Times, but what is so special? Blow up. Maybe it's something in the user interface or whatever. Who knows? All right. So, sure enough, save this. Oh, I forgot to compile it. It's going to tell me in a round that accepts it tells it accepts accepts no. The only two constructors I have accepts a string. The other accepts a string and three integers. So neither of those two constructors apply. Therefore, I got a problem. Yes. It essentially looks like a compile, and it, it displays the text of the air. Yeah, it, it'll uh, semester either you or one, and, and you'll see what it does. But essentially, it displays a message that looks similar to this, not exactly this. Just sits there. Yeah. You gotta go. You gotta leave. Then you just have to <laughs> unplug the computer. No. Uh, C will take you out of the uh, control C. If not, the command window, and that should do it, because that's going to take any processes associated with it. Uh, now, would the answer be to add a no argument constructor? It's the answer in the sense that it would fix this compiler. But it makes sense to have a player without a name, so I don't want. Pardon me? Well, 
why create a construction to yell at people for using it? Okay. If it made sense within the context of the problem that you were trying to solve, but I'm just making up these hypothetical problems, if it made sense to say, like, you know, a name player, then yeah. But the sense to do that, so no, I wouldn't. But you could. You could say unidentified player, and then everything would work. You could default name. But it just doesn't make sense to me to default of someone because there's no like what for students at learning community college I don't know you know John Mary who knows right so seems to be better to say no you want to use this class got to supply a name all right from the perspective of me making the component it doesn't make sense for me to have a player that doesn't have a name assigned now just to say or two, or unknown name, or, you know, if I, let's say my kid's high school team against, uh, you know, the opposing team, and I didn't know the name of seven foot tall, you know, number 23, I could put in seven foot kid wearing number 23 is a name, all right, but class, my does not make sense to have a player that doesn't have a name. All right. What do we do next? Well, we could go routes, right? Because that we could be implementing here. All right. Let's increment. Let's do the math the methods that increment the number of free throws, field goals, and three points. In other words, the, the method we were scoring the game live and they scored or they scored a three scored a three point shot. What does it look like? We could or we could not. For example, I could write a method to increment and say what the new value is. Or I could write the value simply, simply to increment and not, do, not give back any answer. It depends on how I'd want to use it. So I could, I could do that either way. Do I want one score method, though? What do I want instead? Yeah. So I'm going to say score free throw. And what will that do? Well, we'll take our free throw attribute. And it will add one to it. or free throw plus plus. That's the same thing. Add one to it. So I could clone this two other times. Oh, you're right. I was writing it the way that I usually do it, which is saying free throw equals free throw plus one. But yeah, you're, you're right. Score. Field goal.
And finally, score three point Go and save that. Let's compile it again. Oh, still giving me that error. All right. Remember player three. We're going to bring them back in a few minutes here. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, player one, they don't have any points, but P1... Free throw. P1 scores a field goal. And finally, P1 scores a three point. All right. I'm going to compile that. That's right. Now I want to run the unit test. And player one gets six now, and player two has 17. So player one started out with zero, scores a free throw, they get up to one, scores a field goal, they're now up to three, and gets a three-point shot, and now they're up to, to, to six. What if I do this? Remember player three? Player three's back. Okay, that's one vote. One vote that this doesn't work. What are the other votes? What are you going to give? Yeah. Okay, so you're saying it's going to show 6 and 20. You have a vote? Well, yeah, after we see what happens, we could guess what's going to happen. Uh, no, I'm, 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 just, I'm just teasing you. Uh, anyone else have a prediction? All right, let's do what the weatherman does. I'm not going to predict the weather, but explain to you why you got the weather that you did earlier in the day. All right, so let's go and save this and compile it and run it, and we have 6 and 20. We have a winner. Why is that? All right, well, let's go through and explain that. Actually, I'll do it, I'll do it here. We create player one. 
No, I'm, I'm, I, I lied. I'm going to write it on the board while we're looking at the code. All right. I write VB player P1 equals new BB player player one. What does that do? That creates in memory in the heap a BB player at some location, we'll call it location 100, and we set its play its its name to player one. And the point in P1 points to 100. All right. We then call P1 score free throw, field goal, three point. So we, they start out at zero. We increment each of those by one. Player two, P2, equals new BB player, player two, three, four, and two. What does that do? That creates a new player object in memory, initialize the name to player two, initialize three throw goals and three point shots to three, four, and two, and creates a point way. BB player P3 equals P2. First of all, there's no new in that line. So I'm not making a new object on the heap. I'm simply making a new reference. So I'm saying that there is going to be a reference called P3 that's going to contain a pointer to a basketball player object. What pointer? Well, I say it equals P2. When I say a pointer equals another pointer, what that does is it copies the value of the pointer. So P2 and P3 now both point to this guy. So if I P3 scores a three point, I find the player that belongs to P3, increment that, And then if I ask for P1's total points, 1, 1, 1, that's 6. Player 2's, that's that, 3, 4, and 3, that's 20. So again, the whole idea of pointers, all right, with this. And new are created when you have the instruction new. You can assign a pointer to an object that's already been created, and that's, that's legal, that's legit, all right? It's only when you say equals new that you're actually making a new object, all right? We're going to continue with this. We'll do this uh, at least on Monday. We might do it on Wednesday. Uh, we'll see how we go before we go on, because I, I want this stuff to be pretty solid in your mind before we go on to the next set of concepts. Yes? Okay, so if I have right here a line of code that said P3 equals new player, player three, what do you think would happen? All right. What would happen if I asked for P2's point total? Well, that's the two logical answers. One logical answer is 20. One logical answer is it wouldn't be there anymore. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's think this through. Assuming that this line is here after this guy, 
If this line was hit, new player creates, new BB player, would create a new heap at location 300. All right? It would assign to the pointer of P3 the pointer of 300. So now, this guy points to the new object. As was stated, I didn't do anything to the pointer of P2. So P2 continues to point to the object that's in location 200. So if I asked for the point total, I'd still get 20. All right? These are good like mental exercises. And I think there's like little exercises in the book like this. I don't know if we hit it yet in the book or not. But I'll and we'll always ask these questions because it's really important that you really understand what's going on. And it does confusing by, you know, I'm not saying this is straightforward. Yes? Not necessarily in, not necessarily within one routine. Uh, well, I could think of a bunch of them. Number one is when you call a function and pass an object. Well, th that's not necessarily why you're doing it, but yeah. If you pass it an object as an argument, you now have two things pointing to that same object. You have the original instance variable, and then you have um, the, uh, the um, 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 argument. If I calculate the highest, you know, if I, if I create a team class and I um, assign a set of players to the team, then I assign a team captain. You could have the element of the array pointing to a player and the team captain pointing to a player. All right? So yeah, there's a lot of places where you could do this. To be sure, this example's contrived just to, to um, illustrate the points I'm trying to get across. But it's not, oh, he's just trying to trick us. Yeah, there's going to be cases where pointers point to the same thing. Absolutely. And to your point, yes, that's one way. I have to do it for a reason, but it doesn't matter if I call a method, pass it an object, if I manipulate the object inside that method, the quote original would get changed too because there really isn't an, an original and an argument. They're both pointing at the same object. Other questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab.